Welcome back to Pete's 47. And so you've caught me as I'm just doing a bit of a, a mock up with the modelling sheet around this humpback bridge. So I've got the heat gun warming up. I'm going to start sticking some bits down. This is roughly what I'm looking at. So quite a shallow embankment coming up here and then again up to the road. A line of trees along here is what I plan. And then the same as a line of trees along this other side, almost forming an arch over the lane. I've blended in my fills on these joins now. They seem to have gone in quite nicely. I've also got another big embankment here that I'm going to expose some rock on here and then have a dry stone wall running a little bit lower down. Same with the wall along here, a dry stone wall and a fence along here then runs into a bit of a field before it drops off onto another cliff face along here. Started doing a bit of an embankment along that back edge and then I'll be putting this big piece of sea foam back to disguise my power feed. And then I'll be doing the plaster paris on there running through all the landscape again. We've got to do another embankment here so loads of work to do i probably won't film all of it because obviously I'm, i appreciate that you've seen it all before but i will film bits that i feel are necessary as i go and we'll talk in a bit That's most of the modelling sheet down now, ready for the mod rock to go on, which is, I'm going to be using quite a lot of that, I imagine. Still got to work out what I'm going to do at this very far corner yet. Yeah. I suppose this embankment will continue past this siding and then open up into a big hillside again along here. So next up I'll be doing the mud rocking and then perhaps doing the dry stone walls or I may do those last actually so I don't get any static grass on them try and put a meander in this lane a little bit I don't want it too straight right so before I start mud rocking I've just put quickly a bit of a mod uh, rock feature in here I needed somewhere for this embankment to go there was a gap here of no retaining wall. Tunnel portal starts here. So if you want to see how I've done these rock formations, I'll leave a link in the description on how I did it at the stone quarry. But it's basically just insulation board and some cheap bits of paint. So while, while that's drying, there's not much more I can do with it. But once it is dry, I'll weather it with some powders, uh, with a dry powder, add some scenery, in some of the gaps there'll be static grass along this top edge obviously as this embankment comes up to it perhaps another dry stone wall along here but we'll worry about that when it comes to it so i thought i'd try a different technique of doing some rock formations should see a picture coming up now and this is what i'm using as a bit of inspiration i took this picture when i visited monzel dale in the peak district a few months ago so I've been speaking to some of the guys on our group, the WWS uh, Helps and Discussions page. And this is a method that a couple of the guys have been using, is using uh, the sculpture plaster or even tile grout and stuff like that. And basically mould it on to the side of your cliff face. And then before it's gone off, start carving it. So I've let this go off so I can mould it in my hand. And then I've stuck it over the plast over the plaster paris and it's just about turning now so i feel like this is probably the time to start carving it so i'm going to carve some marks in it and rough it up a little bit and see what we got once we put a wash on it Right, 
right so that's all gone off now big one here quite a big one here and then a small one here the color i'm going to start off with is a gray and then i'm going to try and use a black wash to pick out the detail afterwards the gray i've gone with is actually matte emulsion magnolia and then with some black poster paint and i think that's a better gray than probably what i've got over at the quarry the natural yellowing in the magnolia is just how to get that sort of rock color with the black so that's what i'm going to be putting on now and let that dry and then see what we can do with the wash so they're dry now i'm quite happy with them surprised how much better they look actually now they're painted so i intend on having static grass all the way around these rock formations now tufts on top some foliage perhaps in these edges and then a dry stone wall along the top edge before i do any of that i'm going to now start giving it a wash of maybe like a brownie black and i want to try and pick up some of the detail a bit more of a wash but because i'm going to use a water-based wash and this is emulsion which is also water-based i'm going to spray a coat of matte lacquer over this first which is solvent That'll act as a barrier, so when I put the wash on, it's not going to make the rock colour go all milky and mix into two. I don't want the two mixing together. I want the black wash sat on top of this grey colour. So the matte lacquer will act as a barrier, dry in a couple of minutes, and then I can put a wash on. So for the wash, I'm using a water-based poster paint. So I'm using a combination of this dark brown and a jet black. Jet black on its own, I've already tried a little bit and it was just too black, it just didn't work. So I repainted, you can see there where it's ran down here. It just wasn't right. So what I've done now is done one part brown, one part black mix them together and then thinned it all down 50% with water so it's just gave me an ultra thin brownie black and I've tried it on a bit of plaster Paris here so this is where before I thinned it down which you can see it's far too black and far too thick this is thinned down now and that seems like a little bit more of a better one <laughs> some white poster paint now and I'm just going to try and pick up the top parts and get them a bit, cle a bit cleaner white and hopefully we might be there I'm not really going to tell what I've got until I do the scenics that's beginning to look a bit more like limestone now. So I'm going to leave that as that for now. Get the static grass down some foliage and address it a little bit more if i need to and i think that might look okay so the previous picture that you've seen for this clip of lots of rocks with lots of grass that's what i want to try and replicate here perhaps on both sides on these both these embankments uh, then looking over to the station so i might try that at least on one of them anyway and i think i'm going to use the same method using the raw plaster and just put dollops in places 
and then with basing glue and a paintbrush go round them put the static glass on and hopefully when I hoover it off it should leave exposed rock.